behind those friendly graphics and cute emojis are dark, tragic, and heartbreaking stories that only select few remembers. I am but a traveling minstrel that survived the test of time, and my mission? To celebrate the heroics and feats of the unsung heroes, to curse the lies and deception of the beings pulling the strings, to delve to the history and lore of Rune Midgard. The great ruins in the west of Giffen, home of high-ranking demons and undead, what once been the splendid capital of the kingdom of Rune Midgards, boasting an army unparalleled, Glastheim is now but a shadow of its former glory, a great reminder of the continuous cycle of the rise and fall of civilization. The year is 509. King Ozul Richard has passed away, and the royal court has started the task to choose the next king. The first candidate, Prince Gunther of Logenburgs, was too young to handle the kingdom. The second in line, Prince Max Richard, brother of the deceased king, lacked the political support. Finally, the third in line, Prince Mitz of Gaybogs, backed with great achievements and the most politically powerful of all the candidates, has been declared a new king at the year 511. The new king started his reign as a great ruler, embarking various projects both domestic and overseas. He brought great wealth to the kingdom. He also built an arena near Prontera that showcased great adventures fighting demons. This proves to be a great attraction that has been enjoyed by both the rich and the poor which earned him the support of the masses. Within the royal court, however, the king slowly removed incompetent monarchs and those involved in various corruptions. This move provoked the ire of many nobles and accused the king the abuse of power, filling the court with only his loyal followers. However, with both effective management of the kingdom and the support of the populace, the said nobles could not afford to do anything for now. After the death of Braham von Walter, the king learned that Braham is his biological father and he was an adopted son of the Gibogs. The news about the king's true origins has also spread to the other nobles. This triggers a series of events that resulted to the death and exile of Ligenburg family. No one knew the true reason for this tragedy, but it might be possible that the Lugenberg, knowing that Smith is a Walter, has secretly conspired to overthrow the king. This plan however reached the king's ears, resulting to the execution of those involved. However, this is just a speculation, as history is only written by those who win in the end. After the Lugenberg tragedy, the king has further reorganized the royal court. With the Lugenberg gone, he replaced their seat with those from Walters. After several years with great wealth accumulating in the kingdom, King Smith declared that he will build a new castle, three times bigger than the current one. The castle was built in Glassheim, located on the foot of Mjolnir Mountains. After five years, the project has been completed and the king moved to the new castle. And since then, Glastheim became the new capital of the kingdom. During his time in Glastheim, King Smith von Walter never rest on his laurels. He knew that to defend the kingdom from the chaos of the world, he would need a special defense unit that answered only to him. The best knights, crusaders, and paladins were invited to the king's court and there he announced the formation of this elite unit. Attracted by the king's charisma, all the present warriors volunteered to join. This is the birth of the royal guards, a terrifying core 
of Griffon Riding Army, a fighting force unmatched by any other country. The new capital is also protected by the best knights known to men. Leaded by the King Loyal Adjutant Heinrich, Glastheim is an impenetrable fortress, protected by white knights, Kalitzburg Crusaders, and its foot soldiers, the Rydricks. Prosperity has engulfed the kingdom for several years. However, like all things, it did not last forever. One day, while the king is visiting Prantera, the Volkari Himmelmis had attacked Glassheim in order to get the heart of Emir. Varmund, a tenured professor at Juno, has learned about the plan and warned the knight's leader, Heinrich, to hide the heart. But without the king's approval, and believing that the strength of Glassheim army is second to none, Heinrich is skeptical about the warning, and he's never been so wrong. Hemelmis appeared, but instead of fighting the Glassheim knights, she turned them all to undead. Since then, the great white knights became the abysmal knights, while the Kalitzbergs and the Rydricks are but cursed souls forever embedded in their armors. This fills Heinrich with great regrets and promises to stop Himmelmis at all cost. Together with Varmund, an unknown adventurer, they followed Himmelmis towards the location of the heart of Ymir and tried to stop her. But in the end, the Valkyrie has succeeded in her plan. Shortly before departing, Himmelmis left a black orb, which spreads corrupt energy, turning all souls in Glassheim to demons and undead. With the king back in Glassheim, the party has found the orb. However, they realized that the orb cannot be destroyed unless someone sacrificed himself to absorb all the dark energy. Varmund volunteered to do the task. However, the king did not agree, stating that the king can be replaced, but a wise man is irreplaceable. In the end, the king became the sacrifice and has been consumed by the dark orb. With very few survivors, the terror in Glassheim has spread in the kingdom. The remaining nobles who hated the king saw the opportunity and immediately made a move, spreading rumors that the king is mad. King Smith sacrificed commoners to the devils in order to achieve immortality. The rumors resulted to great unrest in the kingdom. These rumors had also reached the ears of the king's cousin, Grinholm von Gebog which launches a coup and lead a rebel group to take over Glassheim. Faced with a weakened army, Greenholm successfully invaded the capital and proceeded to the palace. Inside, they found a demon army which was supposedly summoned by the king. A great battle ensues and many of Greenholm's soldiers had perished. After a violent struggle, they succeeded in defeating the demon army and proceeds to search for the king. When they found him, already being consumed by the dark energy, his body has started to change. Everyone present has confirmed of the king's lunacy and his works with the devil. Smiths was imprisoned, but after a few months, vanished. With him gone, Greenholm became the new king of the kingdom and moved back to Prantera. No one knows what happened to King Smiths, but the former king's soul was actually cursed and used to summon the Dark Lord, in which his soul is bounded forever. Then, the Dark Lord took over Glassheim and became its new ruler. With many witness of the king's final moments, the opposing nobles has painted King Smiths von Walter as a tyrant ruler. This is what was written in the history. And history turns to a legend of a tyrant king in Glassheim that in order to attain immortality has instead spread curse that damned all of its citizens.